Let's just start off with what happened yesterday. Um, obviously, um, Diego Novella Doherty was denied bail. Um, you said you were sitting just, you know, inches from him. Yes. What was going through your mind in court? Wondering what my reaction would be had he been given bail. I was frightened what my reaction, my response uh, may have been. As much as I wanted to control myself, as much as I knew the right thing to do was to control myself and behave, there was another part of me that did not know if I could possibly, you know, hold back my raw emotion. He horrifically murdered my daughter. Is it difficult knowing that the legal process needs to roll out months from now to sit and look at the man who is the accused in this case? Difficult? Yes. Yeah. Yes, there's, there's nothing easy about you know, this process of waiting. But by the same token, it's given me the opportunity to ensure that we're building the prosecution or that the team on the ground here in Cape Town and even around the world is doing the, you know, all that they can to make sure that we get justice mm -hmm. for Gavi. If we go back to the middle of last year and your daughter's time in Cape Town, I understand she'd only been in Cape Town for something like 10 days before her murder. What did you know of what she was doing here and who she was with and the circumstances that led her to South Africa? She was living in California, getting a lot of medical attention uh, for something called Lyme's disease. Uh, she was quite sick. Uh, her so-called friend, boyfriend, uh, uh, traveled to South Africa for some quest or journey or to use some drugs for uh, exp experimental purposes or you know whatever he was doing. And uh, he called her and called her and called her and said, please come, this will, you know, there's a cure for you here, there's a cure for you here didn't know what, had no idea what he was talking about, or I did not as a father, but you know, my daughter was 38 years old and she had a relationship with this man and, and, and so at some level maybe she was, uh, you know, was lured here, lured, you know, to Africa uh, because we were looking for so many different possible cures for something called Lyme's disease that uh, she was willing to perhaps, you know, you know look at what he was proposing, but she did not really know what, she had no idea what was uh, uh, to be, what was on the table. What was waiting for her. What was waiting for yeah. her. And uh, uh, she arrived uh, when, when she did get here and, and uh, she grew up on the, you know, you know, a lot of her life on the beaches in Malibu and, and even Acapulco in Mexico. Uh, she uh, called me and told me, Daddy, uh, can Cape Town is like Malibu, except everyone talks funny. <laughs> so I didn't Sweet. quite know what that meant until I got here. So sometimes I feel like I need an interpreter. <laughs> but uh, it's, uh, uh, so the background is she came here not in, in, in very weak physical condition. Uh, and uh, in fact, when she got here uh, uh, and she arrived, uh, and he was promising to pick her up at the airport. Uh, she didn't. She couldn't find him for two days. My goodness. So she was uh, quite confused and quite surprised when she got here. And the suite where they stayed in Camps Bay, where your daughter was murdered, what news or information have you gathered around what happened in that room? was horrific. Uh, yeah, I, I, I know more than I can really say. And I've been, you know, informed by some of the people that were very close to the investigation. And, um, you know, what I can say is uh, it was horrific. I can say that uh, there were no drugs found in my daughter's system. Uh, it's my understanding that, you know, that there were really no, no drugs in the room. It was Early on, that you know, the the news came out as if there was a uh, sex orgy, you know, mm -hmm. gone bad, and that there was cocaine and mm -hmm. and all.
all these things are found in the room, none of that's true. So the, um, I'm trying to catch my breath right yeah. now because it, it, it's, it's been a while since I've, you know, you know focused on that. Okay. Uh, but she was uh, violently murdered. And there's, um, it's really you know, what I can, okay. what I can, uh, what I can share about mm -hmm. that. It, it it was, as the news came out early on, you know, for uh, Gabby's mom and myself, my ex-wife and myself, uh, to hear that kind of news about her, that that uh, it was a, a, a wild evening mm -hmm. gone bad. None of that's true about her. She was a fashionista, uh, you know, this was not in her DNA. Uh, she uh, was, uh, liked the best restaurants, she liked the finest clothes, she liked the finest jewelry, and she loved being with, you know, I mean, she loved being with people. Mm -hmm. and, and she was very, very, very comfortable being with you know the you know working people. She grew up in Mexico. Her yeah. career, she had a very uh, successful career in public relations, uh, representing companies like General Electric and Aflac and Ford Motor and Bank of America, uh, uh, assisting these companies uh, to communicate to the Hispanic world in the United States, which is growing by leaps and bounds. And she was considered uh, one of the leading uh, marketing strategists in the uh, in the uh, uh, Hispanic marketing. So uh, that is not somebody who is out partying, as uh, uh, these uh, tabloid papers uh, referred to. Mm.